Hello. So, now, today we've looked, spent a lot of time looking at Royal Navy officers. We spent a lot of time considering about the impact of the Naval Service, of Harwood's long experience in the South Atlantic, in South America, on operations. But there is another side to the coin. There is Eugene Militant Drake, who I know at some point I do have called Eugene in the past. I do apologize for this. It's Eugene. Now, he's a career foreign service type. He is though excellently committed to integrating with the areas, with, to representing Britain, but also representing those places back to Britain. He has been a key factor in Uruguayan politics for many years of his appointment there. He takes part in their Olympic bid. He, he manages to become critical to Uruguayans' outreach to the world. And he does this in such a way it builds up very solid relationships. So when Harwood does come to visit, Milton Drake can go, ah, you've got to meet so-and-so, you've got to meet this gentleman, that gentleman. And the Foreign Service is working hand in hand with the Navy. And this is how Britain has influenced the world for a long, long time. At the beginning of this whole exercise on the River Plate, when I was trying to put far more in words than I am now when I'm concentrating on the video side, there were going to be a lot of words, and I worked out it was going to be about 150 tweets we needed to try and make the point and build the evidence necessary to explain Eugene Milton Drake's impact. It's far better though to just talk about the man, and that's what I'm going to do. This is the picture which is most famous in British circles. It's Commodore, soon to be Ad Rear Admiral Harwood, and Ambassador Drake getting together, having a meeting, having a chat. Then working out what to do about the Graf Spey. This is a photo of him from his slightly younger days. If anyone does have Hollywood good looks down there in 1939, it's usually Milton Drake. He is definitely a dashing gentleman, very prominent, very good at socialising. He has makes all the right connections. And he's been career. He's been down in South America for 14 of his 27 years of service by 1939. He wouldn't be back home for another couple of years. He would have spent 16 years down there. He is, he is critical to the British appreciation of South America. And he is critical at this time because even before the Battle of the River Plate, even before any of these things happen, Militant Drake is making connections, is building up a view of what's going on around him, is trying to make sure that the right information is going to the right places and the right perspectives are being held. He's hosting dinners, he's going to dinners, he's going to all the functions. He's doing all the soft diplomacy. He's reminding the people that need to be reminded that it's the very nice Commodore Harwood whose Royal Navy ships are off their coast wandering around the River Plate. You know, the very nice gentleman who's been coming to visit and who I've introduced you to. Yes, yes, yes. All these things to make sure there is as much positive support for Britain as there can be. It cannot be understated how important the Foreign Office is at this time, working hand in hand with the Navy in terms of Britain's global outreach. And actually, if you are talking about global Britain today, and I know I'm getting into current affairs and I shouldn't do, but I'm going to say it. If you're getting into global Britain today and talking about that sort of thing, you need to be talking about funding the Foreign Office. You need to be talking 
about outreach, about diplomacy, about negotiation, about building up information and people around the world who are experts in what is going on and who is the web. Because that is what you had in the 1930s, that is what Britain had in the world for many, many years, and it was critical. Because it made the big difference when they were building the Pan American Neutrality Act, the Panama Declaration, and all these things, Britain was able to influence it at every single level because they had good connections with every single government. Not every government was universally supportive of them, but every government they had good connections with. And it was work of gentlemen like Eugene Milton Drake and many, many others which made this possible. 